Yeah. Yeah, it's going to get really tough to pull this thing along. And as I mentioned, it's the acceleration that is nearly impossible, right? I mean, once it gets up to 20 or 30 miles an hour, I think it can sustain that speed. But once the vehicle stops and then starts to get going, it's really tough to accelerate. And look at the, the rear. You can see how it's getting, the rim is getting just smaller and smaller, the diameter. And once that breaks or the right front breaks, the right front is more of a hub. I think that'll last a little bit longer. You can see the construction on the right front tire or where that tire was on that rim. It's much more sturdy. But the one in the back, I think that's going to collapse here at some point. And, you know, they just don't know what they're dealing with, Philip. The, the suspect has been very erratic, engaging people on the street, could be armed. You just never know. A uh, stolen vehicle, we believe. We believe that is the case initially. We weren't certain if uh, this vehicle was stolen or it could have been an employee that was actually driving. Uh, the truck from the uh, Atomic uh, Concrete Pumping Company, uh, but it appears it's someone who stole the vehicle. See his arm moving around there. We've seen him throw a few things out. Uh, when he sees people on the street, he tries to engage them and talk with them. It's very animated. Uh, they say uh, DUI here, so driving under the influence of something. Uh, that certainly appears to be the case. And open up a little bit, Marcel. We'll see what the patrol cars have done. So they're behind their vehicle. They're trying to talk them out. Best case scenario, the suspect just gives himself up. It's going to be real difficult for him to keep going, though, and as you mentioned, it looks like the tire's going to go flat on that trailer as well. Uh, no, as several times he's actually pulled to the shoulder stop. We've seen him stop in the middle of the street on two other occasions and open the door, threaten to get out. Uh, so we, we've seen that in several different instances during this pursuit. Now, we're on Canoga here, and one good thing about Canoga, open up out of this shot. Now, they're trying to stop all southbound traffic on the right side of your screen. You see the traffic coming south, the suspects coming north. They're trying to stop that. And then you have that big center median, and that's good. You can go back to the pursuit there, Marcel, or to the vehicle. And you have that big center median where the, the walkway is, and that's good because you don't have any oncoming traffic coming into this guy. They're stopping it as much as they can. And this really gives them a situation where they might be able to get around them a little bit better. They may be able to stop this and then if we have this it could be a standoff and that's when I think they're going to use the SWAT. They'll move SWAT in here maybe even get a vehicle in front of them and then back out of that vehicle because that's a heavy truck but once they have this stopped, they have the area contained, then they really can try and come up with a strategy to get this guy out of the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they see that the road is stopped. They see that they can't continue. They see officers with their uh, doors open and their guns drawn. So, you know, obviously they're going to stop. They'll have an officer there in a moment. As I mentioned, there's no southbound traffic coming towards this northbound vehicle. And then also, as I mentioned, there's a real big divider there where you have that bikeway. And that's good, too, because it allows them not to have to worry so much about traffic on that side street. They're going to want to stop any pedestrian traffic on that walkway because they don't know what they're dealing with. They don't know if the suspect's armed. But open up once again, as Philip, as you were talking about on the right side of your screen. No southbound traffic on Canoga is getting by. For now, northbound, he has stopped. We've never seen him stop for this long. I can tell you that much. Been very erratic, stopped from time to time, then kept going. Uh, we've never seen him stop for this long. I think it could get going if you wanted to. I think what we'd see is we'd see the rear axle just start to spin, or the rear rim, uh, like crazy. But getting going is going to be hard. Uh, hopefully the suspect's had enough. He's going to give himself up. We'll get this over with. I think they're in the process right now just trying to make sure the public is safe, trying to make sure they don't get any vehicles down towards this individual. They shut down Canoga altogether. Uh, they've got an air unit overhead, and I know that SWAT has been deployed, so we'll see uh, if they have to use them in this situation or not. But uh, we've never seen them stop for this long a time, here, uh, Philip. Push all the way in. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't believe so. Last time we got a look, and we've been staying on this side because it's just a better shot for us. We like seeing the rims, right? But last time we looked at it in the positioning, the way it's leaning to just this one side makes us believe it's just the, the right side of the vehicle that has the two flats, the front right and, and the right rear. Um, but they are, are shutting everything down. And one thing that's been really interesting in this pursuit, it's gone on, as you mentioned, almost three hours. It's been a slow speed pursuit. We don't think anybody's been hurt. It really has endangered the public too much. But it's been the strategy deployed by the police department. It's changed so many times from tracking to spike strips to backing off altogether to re-engaging over and over again. Uh, but right now, things look good. He's stopped. We don't see any indication he's trying to keep going. And the more time the suspect is stopped, the more time the police department has to get everything in order to make certain nobody gets hurt. They can make some calls, get more vehicles out here, get the SWAT out here just in case this goes to a standoff. And once again, it's a stolen vehicle. Uh, we've seen this individual obviously under the influence of something. They're telling us it's a DUI, but we've seen so much fidgeting. The, the suspect, the driver, just couldn't sit still, Philip. There wasn't a moment during the pursuit that this individual wasn't fidgeting, wasn't moving around. Right now is the best time I've seen without him really moving around, looking out the window, rolling the window up and down. You know, maybe the drugs are wearing off. It's hard to tell. Has a white shirt on at one point. He put the, a sweater on over that, a black sweater, took the sweater off, put the sweater back on. So obviously you're, you're, you're dealing with someone right now that um, is unstable. There's no question about that. But the more time that goes on and this is stopped in one spot, the better it is for law enforcement to surround it and make certain nobody's in harm way, harm's way. Yeah, that looked like an LAPD unmarked vehicle that went by, and it wouldn't surprise me they used the unmarked vehicle to go by and really peek in there, try and get as good a look inside that cab as they could at the suspect. You know, they don't know if the suspect is armed. They're going to want to get these people out of here. You see some people are stopping in that intersection. And because, you know, God forbid, the guy gets out, and even if he doesn't have a weapon, but he pulls something that looks like a weapon and points it at police, they could open fire on this individual, and you wouldn't want to be in the line of sight of that down here off to the right. So there's a lot of things going on in a situation like this. Uh, fortunately, it stopped. I want to push into him one more time. He looks much less animated right now than he did earlier, Philip, like, you know, when this first started at 720. So it, it that may be an indicator, yeah. <laughs> yep. It may be an indication the drugs are wearing off. Maybe an indication he's just tired of this and it's enough. Uh, we hope that's the case. Because right now, if this ends, I mean, it's been, it's been a, a, a lot of effort for law enforcement. It's caused a little bit of a traffic problem from here to here. There have been two accidents. We both we believe both were minor. We don't know for certain, but we, we haven't heard about any injuries. So right now, even this went on for a long time at the west end of the San Fernando Valley. I believe we're in Chatsworth right now, right on the border of Chatsworth and Canoga Park. Nobody really has been hurt uh, it, or injured badly, as far as we know, uh, with severe injuries. So that is good news, because it certainly could have been a lot worse when you think about a pursuit going on this long with that big of a vehicle. He's certainly very calm from what we saw before. If that's an indication that things are wearing off and he's going to give himself up, that'd be great. Yeah. If 
you can. There we go. Yeah, he's backing up the officers. That's what, yep. They they may ask him to lift up his shirt to make sure that there's nothing, uh, you know, they couldn't, he's not armed to there, but more than likely they're happy with this, with his hands on the back of his head. Backing up any moment now, he's going to be face down on the ground. And then they, I think they're not going to be too concerned about clearing the vehicle because we've had so many good shots showing that it was just him. Uh, but uh, if he continues to obey their commands, he'll be face down here in a moment, and then they'll rush up and take him into custody, and then they will clear the vehicle just in case, but we certainly did not see anyone else inside the cab of that truck. Yeah. Oh boy, this isn't good. This isn't good. If he doesn't stay still and he starts moving around to these officers over by the truck, it's 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 a bad situation right here. They want this guy to stay where he was. They're not going to be happy with this, especially the two officers who just cleared the vehicle. They're really not happy with this at all. He's been commanded to get down. He's not staying down. So thankfully, he's getting back down on the ground uh, because that that gets a little scary right there. You just don't know what you're dealing with. It doesn't look like he's armed, but you don't know for sure. hot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and Canoga is not a major thoroughfare up through this area. It's kind of an industrial area. There's a good detour around it. It's going to take a big rig tow to get this guy out of here. And, uh, you know, we were, Mar Marcel was throwing that out. He may have gotten up once he was on the ground because the pavement is so hot. It's pretty hot out here today. And that, that might have been the reason. But um, it's over. It's over for the most part without incident. Uh, it was a long, long time that this went on for hours throughout the west end of the San Fernando Valley. As you mentioned, fortunately, nobody uh, seriously hurt or injured. And... Uh, it came to a conclusion here uh, as, as good as it could. He finally just gave himself up. Right back at you. Okay, thank you. Copy. 